Well, good morning. Welcome back to Living Life Barefoot. It is rainy here. The hurricane has made its way to the Midwest. So my plan today was to film our story about installing solar panels uh, on our homestead. So I picked a great day for it. <laughs> it's rainy. Anyway, I'm in the Jeep. Um, I'll show you what we have. There is 56 305 watt solar panels there. Uh -huh. We did it all ourselves. We built the, those metal platforms that they're mounted on. And so with the, with the help of some friends and family, we installed a 17.7 kilowatt. So in 2018, we decided that yes, we wanted to go this route and install solar panels on our homestead. So the goal was to just not have an electric bill. So I got four years of my utility bills and I sent them to a company in California called Go Green Solar. They designed this system for us. They guaranteed that it would offset our utility bills 100%. Our utility company is a co-op. So I contacted our utility company and discussed with them kind of their what they needed from me in order to be able to tie to their grid. So I sent them all the plans that Go Green Solar sent us and um, they, they approved everything and said after we get everything installed, just let them know they'd send out an engineer and they would hook us up, you know, hook us to the grid. So at that time, their policy was an even one for one net metering. What that meant was for every one kilowatt that I sent to their grid at no charge, they would let me have that one kilowatt back. So during the daytime, we're producing an abundant amount of electricity. We're using, let's say, half of it, and the other half goes onto the grid. And then at night, the electricity that we put onto the grid, we could pull back off of the grid. And our, the meter that they installed ran both ways, right? So it would, it would run negatively when I was putting electricity onto the grid, and it would run positively when I was pulling electricity off of the grid. And at that time, the policy was um, once a year, I believe it was in the springtime, um, we would basically see where we were at and we would settle up. So if I was negative to the utility company, I would have to make up the difference. I'd have to pay that bill. If I was positive to the utility company, then they would cut, you know, they would cut me a check. That was never our goal or intended purpose for doing this. Uh, I wasn't trying to make money. I just wanted to offset our utility bill 100%. So at that time, there was um, a, the basic connection fee um, was around $40 a month. So um, no matter what, I was going to have a $40 per month bill to the utility company, which I was completely fine with. I understand they have maintenance and upkeep and they have employees to pay and I get it. So yeah, no problem. 40 bucks. Here it is. So about a year and a half after we installed our solar panels, our co-op our co-op had their annual meeting and they changed the way that they do the metering. So under the the current agreement, I hate to say agreement because I never agreed to it, but um, so now the way the bill works is this. In real time, as I am producing electricity during the day, any electricity that goes onto their grid, they pay me six cents a kilowatt for it. And then at night when I'm not producing the electricity and my and I start drawing power from their grid, they charge me 12 cents a kilowatt for it. So basically how they explained it to me was uh, they treat us like a power plant. Okay, so my the co-op that we're connected to, they, pr they don't produce any electricity. They buy 100% of it from other power plants, either coal burning power plants, uh, I think some nuclear power plants locally they buy from, and then people like me that have solar panels in their yard. So they pay the coal comp or the coal power plant, the uh, nuclear power plants. They pay them six cents for every kilowatt that they buy from them. Okay, and then they sell it to all of the members, all their customers for twelve cents a kilowatt. So that's you know that's how their business model works. That's how they you know make money. That's how they, you know, pay their employees and pay for maintenance and all that. So 
basically what how they how he explained it to me was we're now a power plant and he is for any amount of electricity that i put onto their grid they're going to pay me the rate that they pay the power plant six cents a kilowatt and then for every and then at night i'm not a power plant anymore i'm a customer so at night when i'm pulling electricity off of the grid they're charging me 12 cents a kilowatt so in a best case scenario let's say um in the month of may i put onto the grid the exact same amount of electricity that i pulled off of the grid that month so basically at the end of that month we there we were we were even me me as the customer and the co-op were completely even on how much electricity I put onto the grid and how much I pulled off to the grid. So in that month, you would think that I would just pay $40, right? Just the connection fee. No, my bill was $100 that month. It was an additional $60 because of how they bill now. So I started kind of doing some homework and researching. And um, so the co-ops in Illinois are not mandated by any sort of legislation. They can basically do it however they want. For an example, like the big utility companies like Ameren, they're mandated by leg Illinois legislation that they have to do the even one-for-one -one metering. Uh, unfortunately, the co-ops were not included in that legislation. So basically my co-op can do whatever they want. Um, so I, I, I then started kind of researching around, called some other co-ops that are in this area. Um, and they too were starting to change how they build their metering. Uh, but people that were already, that they already had an agreement with, they grandfathered in. Almost all of them did that, except the co-op that we belong to. And I know you're thinking, well, why don't you just change your utility company? Because that is an option for most people in Illinois. You can just pick a different utility company. Uh, where I live, that's not an option. This co-op is the only entity that supplies electricity to where I live, unfortunately. So when we first made this purchase of the solar panels, uh, the initial cost was around $22,000 for all the material to do it. That year, we got, about a, we got the 30% federal tax rebate that year, which in our situation amounted to about eight thousand dollars in additional income tax return above what we normally get so you know true out-of-pocket cost was about fourteen thousand dollars i've looked into and considered going completely off the grid and you know buying batteries and unfortunately i have to buy new inverters as well the inverters that we have are grid tied only inverters then i'd have to buy the batteries the charge controllers I mean, it's a whole, it's a whole deal. Um, probably have to spend ballparking another eight to 10 grand, um, to get back to not having a utility bill, but I'd be completely free of these people. You know, I wouldn't even have the $40 a month bill. Um, as it, you know, right now, if the power goes out, a lot of people think, cause I have solar panels. If the, if, if the grid goes down that my power still works, that's not true. Uh, that's not how it works. So since we are tied to the grid, if there is an outage, my solar panel arrays automatically disconnect and shut off. And that's a safety feature so that the guys working on the lines trying to get the electric back going for everybody so I'm not feeding electricity into the, into the system. So, you know, we've been, like I said, we've been looking at other options. If we completely just disconnect from the grid, when the power goes out, I'd still have power. Um, and then, uh, you know, I wouldn't have any bill at all. So that's one option. The other option is to get back to just having a $40 electric bill. I've run the numbers. And those two arrays that I showed you at the beginning of the video, uh, they each have 28 panels on them, 28 305 watt panels on them, and they each have their own inverter. I could, I could put another array up like that and, and another inverter and then, you know, the mounting, all the racking system, uh, all the wiring. Um, that's what I would have to install to get back to just the $40 electric bill for the basic fee. That's how, that's how drastic this policy change was. In the comments, let me know what kind of uh, solar 
system you have installed at your house, if you're still grid tied, if you're completely off the grid, um, I would like to have a conversation with somebody that uh, is completely off the grid and has a system that's of comparable size to mine um, to kind of see, you know, what I need to do. I've, I've heard about maybe used uh, electric car batteries um, that are lithium. I'm not sure. I don't know which route I want to go, but I definitely want to do something different. So it's just frustrating. You know, we had an, we had an original agreement that um, I made a huge financial investment toward and that this financial investment would pay itself off under the original terms of the agreement. And then, uh, you know, unfortunately, there's a little clause in the agreement that says the co-op can change the agreement at any time, basically. Um, and that's what they did. I have kind of... So, you know, I, I keep tabs on this kind of stuff in the news quite a bit. And actually, this morning before I filmed this video, I was looking at some articles. And uh, it seems like most of the states are going this way. So, kind of what they did was they kind of conned everybody into into going this route. And, you know, it's going to be so much cheaper. And we'll give you all, you know, we'll let you have some of your tax money back at the end of the year. And you won't have a utility bill and blah, blah, blah. Now, here we are, you know, about about a decade into this, in my mind, propaganda, and they're starting to change the rules of the game. So um, my co-op, you know, is way ahead of the game. Uh, they did it, you know, they changed our agreement several years ago now. Um, but it seems like uh, a lot of utility companies are starting to go that route. You know, the uh, the big corporations must be losing losing a few dollars by little peons like us putting solar panels in the yard so now they're starting to change the rules of the game i'd like to hear your suggestions in the comments should we stay tied to the grid put up more solar panels so we don't have a utility bill uh just pay the utility bill or um completely disconnect from the grid and go that route that's what i'm leaning toward that's what i would like to do uh unfortunately it's you know i don't have ten thousand dollars laying around so but if we ever do decide to go that route, I will film 100% of it and, and document it the best I can and put it on here. All right, that's it for today. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. Uh, please give us a thumbs up. It really helps out. We're getting real close to 2,000 uh, subscribers. Um, if you didn't watch our live, I agreed to have my daughter let my daughter tattoo a barefoot microgreens logo on me um, once we got to 2,000 subscribers and and got monetized so i kind of hope that works out i haven't had any new tattoos in a long time so and uh, madeline's pumped about tattooing her dad So here I am in the shed. It's a mess. Don't mind the mess. But these are the inverters. Uh, there's two inverters here on the wall, one for each one of those arrays. And it keeps track on this little screen of how many kilowatts have ran through each of those inverters. And they're both uh, right about 60,000 kilowatts each that have ran through there. So in the almost six years that we've had this system installed, 120,000 kilowatts have ran through those inverters. So 120,000 kilowatts have ran through those two inverters and at 12 cents a kilowatt, which is what my utility company charges for electricity, that comes to $14,400. So if we were still under the original agreement of $40 a month, you know, just flat connection fee, uh, I've made back my $14,000 investment uh, you know, as of right now. So, unfortunately, since we're not under that agreement any longer, and I'm basically only getting half of of that value, or they credit me six cents when it goes on, charge me twelve cents when it comes back. Um, you know, I guess my payback period isn't here yet. So, that's depressing to do that math. So, just to wrap it up, would I've done solar again, and the answer is yes. Uh, I would have just been operating under a different agreement. So, you know, I would have adjusted accordingly. So 
Um, I either would have installed more solar panels in, initially, or I would have went completely off grid, or I believe you can do like a, a hybrid of the two. So um, we are going to make some adjustments, I think. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that we installed them. Um, it, it has been, you know, especially that first year and a half, we didn't really have a utility bill. It was awesome. Um, and we run on 100% electricity here. So I don't have a gas, you know, I don't have propane, I don't have a gas bill. Uh, in the winter time, we heat our house with this wood and that wood stove. So that wood stove just requires, it has some water pumps in it that pump hot water into the floor in our house and garage. So that's how it's heated. Um, so I don't really have a heating bill either. So yeah, we would have done, we still would have done solar and uh, we're just gonna have to adjust to the new agreement and uh, go a different route.